you so much for joining me again today on Monday Mind. I'm so glad you could join in. Let me quickly get a couple of things out of the way. Apparently, we have a new president and a new vice president. What do we do now, Glenn? Boy, what a hectic week it's been. It's been a week, hasn't it? What do we do now? Well, you pray. You should have already been praying. I prayed for the Obama administration. I prayed for the Trump administration. I will pray for Joe Biden, and I will pray for Kamala Harris. That's what Christians do. You give it to God, you pray. God has in our nation, in leadership, who he placed in, in leadership, and we have to cope with that. We just have to pray. That's what we do. It's very simple, pray. And also this week is Veterans Day. A very special shout out to our veterans. We love you, we honor you. Uh, we appreciate you so much for what you have done for our country, what you are doing for our country, and what you will continue to do for this great country, the United States of America. Thank you so much. Today we're in John chapter 13, excuse me, John chapter 16, verse 13. The Holy Spirit is not an it. The Holy Spirit is not an it. There seems to be a lot of confusion today in the religious world over the Holy Spirit. Some consider the Holy Spirit as some type of an elusive force that just comes upon us. Others consider the Holy Spirit as some type of a mysterious influence that comes upon us. Others consider the Holy Spirit as some type of imminent force that just comes from God the Father. Well, the Holy Spirit does come upon us. It doesn't come upon us. He, the Holy Spirit, comes upon us and dwells within us. What an honor to know that the Holy Spirit lives in me. It is a real living being. Let's read what Jesus said about the Holy Spirit in John chapter 16, look at verse 13. However, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He, a living substance, a living person, a living being, is alive inside of you, not, not an it that just hangs around in there, comes upon you. The Holy Spirit is real, and what an honor. Let me give you several characteristics of the Holy Spirit. You can just read along, and we, will, we won't take time to go through all these verses of Scripture you're about to see. But you can do a screenshot or whatever and read these verses later. There are several characteristics of the Holy Spirit that I'd like to share with you today. He has a mind, Romans 8, 27. He speaks, John 16, 13, and Matthew 10, 20. He teaches, John 14, 26. He testifies, Acts 20, 23. He bears witness in John 15, 26. He helps man's infirmities, Romans 8, 26. He oversees, Acts 20, 28. He guides, John 16, 13. And he forbids, in Acts 16, 6 through 7. He seals Christians, 2 Corinthians 1, 21 through 22. And he raised Jesus from the dead, Romans 8, 11. The Holy Spirit can be grieved, Isaiah 63, 10. He can be vexed, Acts 5, 16. He can be tested, Acts 5, 9. He can be resisted, Acts 7, 51. He can be blasphemed, Mark 3, 29. Well, it's been a joy to be with you again today on Monday Manor. And remember, the Holy Spirit is real. He lives inside of you. It's like having Christ and God themselves living inside of you. What a joy and honor to know that God loves me enough to leave his spirit to dwell inside of me and to keep me safe and secure and to guide me and to counsel me until he returns again. You guys have a great week. I enjoyed it. I'll see you guys again next Monday. Thank you so very much.